What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender texturing tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to apply two different textures to a mesh depending on how steep the mesh is. This can be especially useful when you're trying to do landscapes where you get steeper areas that don't necessarily have vegetation and then the flatter areas do. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our shading workspace. We're going to start by adding a material to this object. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm going to add a new material, and then I have an image that I brought in from Megascans. You can find materials at like textures.com or other things as well. It's just like a forest ground material. But I'm just going to do a shift A over here. I'm just going to add an image texture node. I'm going to hook that into my base color. And I'm going to make sure I'm in material preview mode. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open the material map that I'm looking for. So in this case, this is going to be the albedo. So what that's going to do is that's going to apply this material to this face. But one thing you're going to notice about this is this doesn't look very good. The reason this doesn't look very good is because we haven't actually UV unwrapped this yet. And so the material is not really being applied very well to this object. So the way that we can fix that, at least for this one, is we can click on it, tap the, and we're going to actually go into UV editing mode. We're going to click on this, or we're going to select our mesh by tapping A. Then I'm just going to tap U and I'm going to click on the button for unwrap. And so this should be able to unwrap this fairly well just, uh, just by default because everything should be made up of quads if it was made up with the ANT landscape add-on. But now if I look at this, you can see how this material is being applied in here, but it's way too big. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to scale this up by we'll call it a factor of we need it to be pretty big so we'll maybe call it a factor of 30 for right now and i'm gonna hit the enter key so now if you look at this material it's been mapped to this face so you can see how this material is being applied to this face based on our uv mapping over here and even this we may want to scale it up by another five or something like that you just want to make sure that the leaves and the other stuff on here um, look appropriate. So in this case, I think that they do. So now we have a material applied to our object. So if we go back into shading and look at this now, you can see how our mater material has been applied to this object. I'm going to go through real quick and hook up the rest of the maps because this obviously shouldn't be shiny um, because it's supposed to be a forest floor material. So I'm going to hook the rest of these maps up real quick and then we'll come back and talk about what to do next. All right, so now you can see how if you look at this texture, um, it's been applied in here and the light is uh, now working with it appropriately. And so what we need to do is, first of all, I'm getting a little bit of tiling in here, so I might come back and in my UV editing, maybe scale this down a little bit. So I'm just gonna do an A, then over here. So we'll scale this down by maybe a factor of 0.3 or something like that. So it doesn't look like a tiled image in here. So now we have our material applied to this face inside of our model. And so if we were to look at this rendered with the light applied to it, and I'll go ahead and I'll add, uh, let's call it just a sun for right now. I'll move it across here and we'll knock our strength up to, we'll call it 100 for right now. And so now we've got our sun material or our sun shining light on this. And so now what we want to do those, we don't want this to look quite so uniform. So what we want is we want to come in here and we want to apply a stone material when everything gets over a certain, um, a certain slope, right? Because in a lot of cases, you wouldn't necessarily have all this vegetation growing along those slopes, those steeper slopes. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to select our object and we're going to add a new node. So the new node, we're going to do a shift A and this is going to be a geometry node. So we're going to add a geometry node in here. And then there's a few different ways that you could do this. I am going to do another shift A and we're going to add a separate XYZ node right here. And then we're going to add a color ramp node. So basically what this is going to do, and like I said, there's a few different ways that we can do this, is I'm going to take the normal location for my geometry. So that's going to find the normals of this geometry, and I'm going to drag this over here. 
and then I'm going to drag the Z value into my color ramp. And so basically what that's going to do, that's going to allow me to use the steepness of the Z of the normals, meaning the up and down um, of the normals in order to dictate um, what areas are considered steep and what areas aren't. And then over here we're just going to do a control shift click on our color. So what that's going to do is that's going to give me a preview of where the lights and where the darks are going to be. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this color ramp in order to dictate the areas that are light and the areas that are dark. So you can see how as I drag these together, the steeper areas are getting a darker material applied to them because their Z value is higher. So you can kind of play around with this, but basically the idea is you're trying to use the steep areas to get a rock material. Um, so basically the areas that are black in here, you want them to get a rock material. The areas that are white, you want them to get the grass material. So we're using this in order to find that. And just notice, in some cases, I've had an issue with this working in Eevee. So it's working for me right now, but if you just get like a black or a white material when you change this, or like a uniform gray, um, make sure that you switch your rendering engine over to Cycles, and Cycles will definitely work with this. Um, like I said, sometimes Eevee seems to be working for me, and sometimes it doesn't. But basically what we want to do now is we want to create a mix shader. So, or a mix, we want to add a mix node. And so what a mix node is going to do is that's going to take multiple materials and that's going to apply them to this, uh, to this mesh. And then we're going to use this to dictate where each material is going to be applied. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to do a shift A and we're going to add a mix shader right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag one material into the shader right here. And then this shader is going to go into my surface on my material output. And then we're going to drag our color out of our color ramp into the factor. So basically what that's going to do is that's going to um, basically set this up where the black areas get one material and the white areas get another material. And in this case, you can see how this is getting applied to the vertical faces. So we want to switch this out. We want to drag this one to the bottom shader, and then we're going to disconnect this top one real quick. So you can see how now what I have is I have a material where all the areas are somewhat flat, or at least less steep. And then I want to apply another material to the areas that are currently black in here. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to add our second material. So I'm just going to duplicate this. I'm going to do a Shift D to duplicate. We can go ahead and drag the BDSF into the first input. So you can see how now I'm going to get a white material right here. So this can be really useful for adding things like snow. But in this situation, what we want to do is we want to add our rock material. And so the rock material is another material I've downloaded from Megascans. But I'm just going to do a Shift A. And we're going to insert an image texture node. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into my base color. And I'm going to find my rock image. So in this case, I have a rock material right here that I'm going to apply. So what that's going to do is you can see how now the areas that were black are getting this rock material applied to them. The areas that were white are getting the grass material applied to them. So I'm going to go through real quick and I'm going to set up the rest of my uh, I'm going to set up the rest of my inputs for this rock material and then we can come back and take a look at the result and what's being created. So now, if you look at this, you can see how my landscape now has a rock material applied to the steeper areas and a grass material applied to the less steep areas. And so from there we could start scattering plants or we could apply a water shader to this or also a background. There's a lot of different things we could do from here, but this should give you a general idea of how you can use the uh, normal orientation in order to create a mixed texture like this one. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Have you used a method like this before? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.